Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for either joining us live tonight or watching the recording of this presentation with Mia Lowry on Psychedelic Community, the essence of Psychedelic Community. We've been really uh, happy to work with Miss Mia and the Psychedelic Club that we have meets that meets at Firefly Hollow. And I'm sure she's going to share all about that and any other information. Um, feel free during this live or even the recording if you'd like to ask any questions put that in the comment box and we can absolutely have some space for you to go on the camera if you'd like or just put in the chat box just please be aware that this is recording so if you do decide to go on camera and have your voice on the recording that is something that you're giving us permission to do so um, by opting in to do that. If not, you can ask questions in the chat and we can relay them to Miss Mia um, during or throughout or at the end or whatever she prompts for questions. But other than that, I'm really excited to introduce Mia. Um, I think she's doing really amazing things in the world and I'm really excited for you guys to meet her and learn more about what she's doing and what she's up to. So, all right, hello Mia, go ahead and take it away. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me this evening. Um, thank you, Kara, for this opportunity to connect with you all and talk a little bit about the essence of psychedelic community building. Um, as Kara said, my name is Mia Lowry. Um, I um, exist in the psychedelic space in, in a couple capacities. Um, professionally, I do some work in the space in continuing education and event planning. Um, I'm a member of the Graduate Advisory Board for the University of Pennsylvania's Penn Psychedelics Collaborative. That's an interdisciplinary uh, multi-school consortium um, that focuses on research and education. Um, our goal is to engage with the community and build an interdisciplinary center at the university um, and potentially some course and curriculum programs. So uh, my role there is an event planner. I help with their um, annual conference. We had our first one last year and we have another one coming up and some other smaller events. Um, and then I also work in the capacity as a social impact strategist. So what I do is try to determine um, opportunities where we can engage with the community and be as socially um, impactful as we can in all of our work. Um, in addition to uh, the Psychedelic Club of Central Pennsylvania is a really cool uh, organization, a grassroots organization that just provides a, a safe and um, safe container uh, for community building and discussions and education around psychedelics. And that's what we're basically going to talk a little bit about today is really the essence of building a psychedelic community, what that means, what are some different key principles um, and challenges and rewards. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty informal. Um, so if you have questions, please drop them in the chat. However you'd like to do it, Kara, is totally fine with me. Uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point if you want to talk about something or comment or question. Um, that's what we're here for. So I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Um, and I'm not an artist, so excuse the um, elementary graphics, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do this. So let's see here. Do you need to permit me, Miss Kara? Okay. So let's go here. And let's present. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. So like I said, I'm not a graphic designer, so bear with me. Give me a failing grade if you'd like to. It's okay. So we're again, we're just going to talk about some components of psychedelic community building, why it's important, why it's happening right now, why it's more prevalent, why you're seeing more discussions in this space, and why it's such an awesome opportunity to connect with like-minded people. So some of the key principles around psychedelic community building, these are very elementary, right? These are just basic expected principles that we're going to talk about, um, whether you're interested in joining a psychedelic community or whether you're interested in um, starting one yourself. Uh, there's a lot to be mindful of. And as you create these containers and these structures for people to meet, again, whether you're just attending or facilitating, everybody is going to play an active role. Um, so, you know, it's it's really important to be mindful of a lot of these a lot of these things we're going to talk about today. So obviously the first one which really doesn't 
you know, need an introduction, but which is um, inclusivity and diversity. So there are, and you will encounter if you haven't already, if you've been in psychedelic spaces in conversations um, about any, you know, sort of um, stigmatized substance or anything that produces an altered state of conscious, you're always going to have a lot of diverse opinions, uh, perspectives, backgrounds, experiences, um, people that, um, you know, uh, are experienced in it, people that are inexperienced um, and varying opinions. So it's really, really important to be able to hold appropriate space for everybody. Everybody's opinions are welcome. Um, and it, you really do get a lot of varied insights. You know, that's something that we see in public conversations a lot is uh, people that have varying opinions about it, um, which is, it's, accepted, you know, creating this space for that where people feel comfortable to share their opinions um, is, is definitely necessary. So this one's really great. Um, shared experience and connections. Um, you know, psychedelics can not just in the container of community building and talking about it. Um, but if you share experiences with people, these can lead to really deep connections. It's why you see a, a common thread of unity um, and connection in a lot of conversations that are around psychedelics and with psychedelics. So, um, you know, this creates and fosters a lot of very interesting connections and bonds, which in the society, I think we can all agree in the society that we live in today, um, sometimes it's lacking, right? Sometimes you don't find those connections and experiences or finding your people as you call them, um, that do feel the same way about you, about psychedelics or about anything that, you know, that you have going on in your life. So um, this is one area of psychedelic community building that really kind of builds that sense and it develops new relationships. I've met a ton of really amazing people um, in this space and around this space or as a result of being in this space. And I imagine a lot of those people are going to remain constant in my life. So um, I'm very thankful for that. So again, this is a really great opportunity to explore new connections with people. Um, in the confines of, you know, building psychedelic community, safety and support are two really big components. Um, these are really powerful substances. Um, you know, it's really important for people to feel safe and supported in that environment um, while you're talking about it, while you're sharing about it. You know, you want physical safety. You also want emotional safety. You want to feel if, as if you can, the people that are entering your community can share very vulnerable things um, and that you can support them in the best way, um, being mindful of your role in it, right? Um allowing members to um, explore and community members to explore and integrate their experiences. Um, as we all know, there are a lot of people that are self-guided journeyers, right? This is now just entering into the mainstream, into medicalization and and um, that whole world. So um, people do go through a lot of these experiences on their own. So um, if you're presenting to the space uh, or to your community or your group or your organization or the event, and people do want to share whatever your level of comfortability is for that. Um, if you say, hey, I'm here, go ahead and talk to me. I'm happy to talk to you. Again, understanding your, your role in that is just to really be a good listener. So it's just kind of holding that space for the other person. So really important as you build these communities, especially around this topic. Um, and then obviously education, right? There's in the world of information sharing, um, there's tons of information out there. There's a lot of really great, credible resources now, I think that have been presented over the last several years, obviously well before that. Uh, but most recently, there's some really great media publications and media outlets, uh, websites that you can go to. Um, so you can see clinical research, you can see evidence-based research, you can see what's happening in news and culture and business, because there is a lot that's happening in the space. Um, sharing accurate <laughs> and appropriate education and information, I think is key. Um, that's a harm redu reduction and a risk reduction component of this. You want to ensure that people do have access to appropriate information. 
Um, it also helps in educating the people around you, your friends, your family, um, other people, people that you may work with. And as you engage in the community and you build friendships, it's great to share appropriate information and people are going to ask you, right? Um, we've all experienced that. Or if you've been in this space or you've talked about psychedelics in any capacity, people do enjoy sparking up a conversation. So you want to make sure that you can you know, speak appropriately on it and um, help direct people to, you know, good resources. So being in a community and having a good education component is absolutely key. Um, and then kind of, as I mentioned earlier, like the integration of experiences, um, you know, this is in a psychedelic community, this is a great place to do that. Um, you can experience a lot of interesting things if you utilize psychedelics and have or enter altered states of consciousness and have certain experiences. So sometimes these are difficult. Sometimes it takes talking to someone else um, to be able to integrate it appropriately or get guidance on how to do that. Or they always say, you know, so many hours or weeks after a psychedelic experience don't make any major life changes because sometimes you feel an overwhelming feeling to do that after these experiences. So having somebody to talk to in, in a community of people um, to talk through those things uh, is, is really important. So if you feel that you can show up in the community that way. And like I said before, kind of hold that space for somebody um, and, or you want help from other people, you know, you might be the, the receiver or the sharer or, you know, having different roles during these conversations. So, but in this space, you know, being able to help people integrate and talk through complicated experiences um, is really an important aspect of it for sure. Um, as expected, and, you know, respect for indigenous and traditional practices, um, I think this goes without mentioning, but um, it's really important, especially now as the medicalization of psychedelics is emerging, rapidly emerging, is understanding the historical and the traditional practices of psychedelics. They're it been in existence for longer than we can probably even accurately imagine and chart. And um, so respecting these traditions, respect, you know, respecting where they came from, respecting other people's use in, in their cultures um, and how they utilize psychedelics or any substances, any entheogen, anything like that. Um, acknowledging, you know, historical uh, context. All of this is a really, important significance. All of this is really important as we navigate these conversations and especially with the direction that, you know, psychedelics can go um, and are going, it's really important to remain cognizant of, you know, and have respect for the indigenous practices and things like that. So we, it's, it's a priority. So having those conversations, I really encourage that in any community setting. Um, it's uh, always a great, a topic to talk about and it brings through um, a lot of a lot of interesting storytelling and a lot of community. So innovation and research again there's a lot happening right <laughs> if you um, there's some really great resources out there one is called Blossom Analysis. Um, if you go on their website they have a repository of um, evidence-based um, research articles. They have um, by compound, um, by medical condition. Um, so you can really search. So there's a lot happening in terms of innovation and research. So um, a community in this capacity is a great opportunity to talk about that. Um, it's being studied in a lot of different capacities and as well as reflecting on um, you know, like I said, the traditional use. So understanding this kind of broadening perspectives, um, this helps with the acceptance of these substances. Um, you know, there is a, there's a lot of, again, varying opinions about how psychedelics can be used and, and implemented outside of the healthcare system, inside the healthcare system. So understanding that there are really great people 
um, in positions that are doing really great work um, to try to legitimize this or to try to um, expand what we can offer in our traditional healthcare system. So there is a lot of great research pouring into this. So your community is an, an awesome opportunity to share this information. Uh, my favorite, which is creativity um, and expression. So um, if you've experienced psychedelics or if you're thinking about experiencing psychedelics, a lot of people find that uh, they are more creative and they're more expressive and they have these, you know, you can, you can have beautiful creative experiences as a result of it. Um, there's a lot of conversation also and more anecdotal. Um, conversation around the use of psychedelics for creativity, um, for optimization. Um, so this can, you know, the use of psychedelics or having used psychedelics is something that, um, you know, in a communal context um, is really great to help share your experiences and be creative. You can also be creative while you're talking about psychedelics, right? Through different activities that induce creativity while you're talking about, you know, the substance. So um, one key piece that I think is super important and especially in the context of medicalization, the creativity and expression can sometimes get lost. So understanding that for a lot of people, this is how they use psychedelics and that's how they prefer to use psychedelics and respecting that is, is really important. Um, just a quick note on environmental and social responsibility. Um, you know, again, if you're in this context, you'll understand or you'll find that um, a lot of people feel more connected to nature when they're when they're in this type of community or when they've utilized or utilizing psychedelics. So it kind of can give you a feel anecdotally, people say of being interconnected to one another. Um, people also give references to mushrooms and the mycelium and you get interconnected in the mycelium of the mushroom. So you feel this connection to the earth um, and to what's around you and nature around you, um, which in my opinion, I feel like we could all do a better job at that. But um, these, you know, psychedelic communities can emphasize these points. They can emphasize sustainability and then social justice core principles as well. So um, there's a large conversation ar around social justice and psychedelics, which is an incredibly important conversation to continue to have and continue to be put at the forefront um, as other industries and things have come before us and have um, failed in that respect, it's really important that we make social justice a um, core conversation, feel comfortable to talk about things that happen um, and um, topics that are related to this. Um, and, you know, just try to contribute in really valuable ways if you feel called to do so. Um, and then legal and ethical considerations, right? Obviously, psychedelics in many capacities and most capacities are still, you know, illegal. So there are some some states and some areas around the country that have decriminalized it or legalized it. Um, you know, it's around in, in Oregon for um, use at licensed service centers. So still being really mindful about the where it is um, and what we're talking about here and how to be safe. Right. We, you know, being safe is a priority for everybody. So, you know, we also have to be in this community um, kind of stewards for these conversations and advocating for responsible and ethical use is a priority as well. So if you find yourself in a psychedelic community or wanting to engage and wanting to do advocacy work, um, you know, do a lot of research around it. Talk to your peers, um, align with organizations that are promoting good work and good messaging that have a really strong mission and, and value system um, so that you can be involved in some advocacy work. Um, there is a lot of need for it, uh, but obviously understanding when you're advocating for something, um, you just have to make sure you're informed and you're prepared to have difficult conversations um, with people that may not be as open to talking about it as you are, or may not be as passionate about it as you are. So um, understanding how to show up you know, the best way in that capacity is really important. And um, it's really important that we do have advocates 
um, across the board from all walks of life uh, that are supporting these conversations. Um, even if it's not something that you would do yourself or have done yourself, but it may benefit somebody in your family, you feel very strongly about the research or whatever, whatever your connection is to it. Um, be really mindful of that, be able to share your story effectively. And again, align with really good organizations that have good mission and good values. So that's really important. Um, so obviously some challenges, some of these might be um, <laughs> Definitely, um, as expected, right, if you're coming into a psychedelic community, questions around sourcing um, are very prevalent. So uh, that's not something that is um, appropriate in a psychedelic community. Um, you may meet people in there in the community. Um, and you share relationships outside of that container, but inside the community container that you're building, it is really important that you not that you not engage with that or um, facilitate any conversations along those along those lines. Um, so navigating group dynamics is obviously also a really important aspect. You're going to have a lot of varying opinions um, about a lot of different things, and and people are very passionate um, about psychedelics or any kind of substance that may have been very life-changing for them. So, um, you know, how can you contribute appropriately to the group dynamics? How can you help guide conversations um, so that way people do feel heard and appropriately uh, supported? So navigating that is always, um, can always be interesting. Um, Trip sitting and people that are offering services, that's also something that's a, you know, kind of a full stop. Um, there are a lot of conversations around it, you know, online and in various chats and forums, people that are coming out as trip sitters or offering services and things like that. So, you know, we don't really talk about trip sitting. It's not something that um, we, you know, forwardly um support. But um, if you're looking for somebody to offer peer support to you, um, by all means, uh, you know, that's great. If you're um, exploring or want to explore with psychedelic substances um, and you want to have somebody be there with you, finding somebody that can offer appropriate peer support um, for you you know, during your journey or during your experience um, is, is great. You can find those people in various capacities and various psychedelic communities. Just be really mindful, right? Uh, you know, there's some key questions that you can ask people about, about, you know, how would they hold space for you? If something really significant came up for you, uh, what would they do to help you through that? You know, just make sure that they're really cognizant about how they're supporting you during that time. So um, and then lastly, for this is diverse opinions. Like I said before, you're going to have a lot of people that have a lot of varying opinions. So um, being respectful and, and giving everybody the opportunity to share is, is pivotal. So those are some of the challenges. Lastly, we'll wrap up and then we'll open up for questions is uh, rewards. There's an endless amount of rewards that we could talk about um, with community building. Um, this doesn't even, this isn't even a, a portion of the list, but um, obviously the community building aspect of it through my work in psychedelics, I've met so many amazing people. And I said that earlier, I'm very hopeful that a lot of these people are going to remain in my life for a very long time. So you meet a lot of really great people and build some connections and community building should be healing in and of itself. Um, you know, you're building this container with people, developing these relationships, that community building aspect of it is also very healing. Um, another reward is integration support, right? So if you have an experience or a journey and in, you just need to find your people to connect with and work through it, um, community building is a great opportunity for that um, to, you know, find the others or find your people uh, because usually your, you know, your voice is welcomed. Um, education is obviously key in these spaces. That's a huge reward to be able to talk about what's happening and, and educate each other. Um, so you can go out and, and, and you know, educate people, other people in your lives. Um, 
one of the very important aspects and I think rewarding aspects from my perspective is harm and risk reduction. I have a background in healthcare administration with risk management. So risk reduction is really important for me as we navigate all of these conversations, regardless of how you feel about medicalization, about legalization, decriminalization, it's really, really important that if you're going to contribute to these conversations, you approach it from a, an angle of harm and risk reduction. Nobody wants to do harm onto others, or we really hope that nobody wants to do harm onto others. So um, being able to help each other navigate various circumstances, um, helping hold space for people that reduces risk, um, helping people understand um, different aspects about psychedelics to reduce risk. Uh, the more you can learn about harm reduction and risk reduction in this capacity, if you're going to be in a community, uh, the better, I think, uh, because there are going to be a lot of people that are entering this space that are new and don't understand. So be that, you know, be that support for them. Um, and then, yeah, there's a million, there's a million other rewards um, out of this. And uh, I think one of the big ones is inner exploration. You know, we're all, we're all trying to learn and find out different things about ourselves, um, whether you're in it to heal, whether you're in it for um, self-guided exploration, whether you're in it for creativity, um, there's, a there's a million um, capacities that you can experience psychedelic substances. And so, um, you know, an inner exploration is one of them. You don't have to, you know, necessarily have a diagnosis or something associated to it. Um, really just finding a better sense of self, I think is a great, is a great reason um, to do those things. So that's my last slide. Um, let's chat and I'm happy to answer some questions. Thank you, Mia. So I'm going to pull up the first question we have in the chat. And for those of you who are here, please um, ask us questions in the chat. I love um, everything you shared. And before we go into the first question, I just want to share, I love that you brought up social justice with the potentials for what psychedelics are doing. So, you know, I find it, it's one thing if there's something, anything out there, like yoga is one way to help people find that sense of knowing who they are, um, you know, getting rid of the parts of the parts of themselves that are not themselves and bring, being um, more tapped into a space of understanding connect, interconnection. And so I, I know a lot of people in the yoga culture that are really tapped into this need for social justice and not everybody, you know, that's not their path. So I love that this is another alternate route to have a direct experience of interconnection, feeling connection to nature, feeling connection to oneness, letting gut down um, our preconceived notions and judgment so that we can see the world from a different perspective and maybe see a targeted uh, potential stigmatization of a, of a group of people or anywhere that's been marginalized that we maybe have trauma around a specific group that we judge because we like, oh, we don't like them, whether it's politically or culturally or whatever. I, I love that psychedelics really break that down and just the the possibilities for that being integrated into our culture in a bigger way, in a safe way, whether it's medically based or, you know, explorers in a way that's safe is what we need. In my opinion, we need so much. I love that you mentioned the social justice piece. Yeah, it's very important, you know, um, understanding, you know, historical inefficiency, right, historical context of social justice in relation to many different things, but it also in relation to other substances that have kind of come before this. Um, there was a really bad, you know, bad job sometimes at, at continuing the social justice piece of this conversation. So I think it's really important for us all to do our part and um, engage in that conversation, um, whether they're you know, can be difficult conversations or, you know, um, put yourself in the place of other people is really, really important. So I think that um, from my perspective, when you're building a community, uh, it's really important to focus and, and have those conversations at the forefront continuously and, and yeah. respect, respect diverse opinions and voices. Yeah. Um, I will share for those of you. So I've been working with two um, psychedelic assisted psychotherapists 
And so I know that Mia mentioned the state of Oregon has facilities that have licensed practitioners that are working with uh, therapists who are trained to use these medicines legally and things like that. And it was really interesting in one of my experiences working with them, um, there was a woman that was also in, it was a group setting and she had never done any sort of drug, marijuana, cannabis, anything at all. She was very conservative religiously and she was also very conservative politically. And so she came in and she was like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like I'm supposed to be, you know, Jesus wants me to be here. And it was really cool. Her religion brought her to that path with a lot of really open hippie kind of mentality people that were in the group. And just to see her kind of have her experience and let down her guard and her preconceived notions based on her worldview of maybe the type of personalities that she would have never been in contact with or been in relation with in a group setting outside of her normal social setting. It was mm -hmm. beautiful and it was so mm -hmm. healing for her. And it just completely changed her world. Just mm -hmm. one session, one experience. So that's how powerful the potential is for that effect rippling out into social justice. So I want to ask the first here. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Stacy mm -hmm. and Carla, I see both of you in the chat. I'm going to go with Stacy's question first. So, uh, Stacy, I'm going to ask your your second part of your question first. So the first question is: you, Is using psychedelics a one and done event? Is it something that is done in titration effect? How often would one take psychedelics? So this is sounds like this is very new. There's so much more information out there. I'd love to hear what Mia says has to say about those questions those three uh questions that are kind of in a in that little category here yeah definitely so there's a million ways that you can approach this and psychedelics just like other you know the use of other substances in this capacity it's different for everybody there's no prescription there's no uh you know as you approach the medicalization conversation you they try you're going to try to see things um that are more like you're talking about is it titrated is it this is that so a couple key things that i think i would mention if you're just starting out using psychedelics um be mindful <laughs> be incredibly mindful about um, the amount that you're trying. It's always, you know, recommended, even when you're using cannabis, if, you know, it's you start low and go slow. So um, if that's what you're doing, is it a one and done thing? Uh, it could be, it could be for you. You could have an experience on uh, some kind of substance and um, it could be life-changing and, and that's it. And, and that's it. And you integrate and you move forward um, or, you know, you decide, hey, this isn't for me. Um, so it it's really personalized. It's really um, individualized. So um, technically titrating things like that, again, not quite um, in the context that it's currently in. Um, as it is medicalized and, and you'll see some, some companies are trying to turn it into patches and pills and things like that. Um, will those be probably part of that conversation? Sure. Um, sure. Uh, how often would somebody use it? Um, again, with, with the utmost safety, um, and risk reduction in mind, um, I would just, again, start, be very conservative <laughs> with how you're approaching it. Um, especially again, if you haven't tried it before, or it's a different type of substance, um, make sure you're finding opportunities to, uh, verify, um, you know, your substance, there's organizations out there that can help you test your substances. So, um, that will also help you determine how often you may want to, um, utilize them. And, um, you know, again, give yourself after your experience, give yourself time to process, give yourself time to integrate and think about things. And there's a lot of really great integration tools out there, journaling, yoga, meditation, uh, nature immersion, talking, integration groups, um, talking to a therapist, you have a therapist. Um, so there's, and those are just to name a few. So uh, give yourself a little bit of time 
yeah, a time to integrate. So I hope that answers your question. Then we can move on to the second part of the question. Sure. Um, thank you so much for mentioning everything there, Mia. And I know that Mia had mentioned earlier that um, she's very passionate about harm reduction, and so am I. So I love the way you answered that. And I know that we do have a mental health care crisis, mental mental health crisis really going on in our country. And so one of the things that Mia had said about like a sitter, because the second pass of this, the second mm -hmm. part of this question is about a sitter. You know, what is that exactly? And so I think, um, you know, one of these things is like, you know, would you, you know, because people are going to explore, because there's so much information out there, this is happening really quickly with people wanting to tap into this resource and learn about it and seeing some really great documentaries and learning about this. I've had a lot of people approach me as well and saying, I want to explore. And so, like, I love that you said, go slow and also reach out for a lot of support and do a lot of research, because even though these substances aren't legal in the space in which we're in, we know that people are going to use that. And that's why we're having these conversations, because people are going to do it. You guys are going to do it. Right. And we we need to make sure that you have the resources as much as we can. Um, so the the effects of having a person that would be a sitter um, mm -hmm. is the question. So. Um, I'd love for if you could speak up on, you know, I mean, there are people out there that if, my personal opinion is that um, if they've not done any work and they have some trauma or PTSD or a lot of stuff that they're maybe going through, that I think it's really responsible to connect with an integration psychotherapist. There are some online, like I really personally feel passionate about that because you don't want to open up some trauma or something like that might come up for you. Even if you are using small amounts, it really, everyone's different. Like, I really don't know how it would affect you, but I just think it's really important to just speak out about that as far as my my passion for harm reduction, if you have any background that's really important for that. And then the question here for you, then, Mia, or sorry, I just wanted to say that, mm -hmm. was what kind of effects would a person have that would possibly warrant the need to have a sitter? So I'd love for you to talk about what a sitter is because it's sometimes a sitter is actually different sometimes than an actual psychotherapist or someone who's trained in mental health background. Yeah. And so that's the key difference right there, right? Most um, trip sitters out there are people that um, have done it um, in a legacy capacity, you know, in a capa underground capacity, if you will, um, where they, uh, you know, either charge people or don't charge people and they're there, but they're present for their journey. They help them um, set up, you know, their environment. Um, they help make sure that they're safe. Um, they help get them things as they need. So if they get hungry, if they get thirsty, um, some people, you know, it's there it, with the use of some psychedelics, there's, um, you know, physical uh capacity, right? Your physical capacities are altered, right? So sometimes people need help going to the bathroom or navigating their home. Um, and then obviously, like Kara said, um, you know, if you were taking psychedelics in any capacity, whether it's the first time or not, and you think you're going to uncover some things, um, you know, that are really harmful or, you know, really deep in, excuse me, deep into your past, um, that can elicit a lot of really intense emotions. Sometimes it's it's good for people just to have somebody who's around them. Now, uh, what Kara was mentioning and the capacity of trauma, if you do uncover something that is really traumatic or um, you have um, a history of something or, um, you know, you're, you're, trying, you have an intention to kind of get through something in your life. Um, that's where we would definitely recommend that you work with um, somebody who is trained in this capacity, who is trained as a, a licensed professional um, to help you with your trauma, to help you with, you know, um, move through that appropriately, provide the, uh, the right support for that. Um, and so that there isn't any kind of further harm done. And that's really a lot of what's based around the conversation right now in terms of trip sitters and peer supporters and um, doing it in the medical context where you're with a licensed professional and you're supervised um, and you have immediate integration support. So um, just as many good actors as there are out there, there can be bad actors, there can be people that um, try to help you that aren't trained. Um, so if you're exploring, 
utilizing psychedelics and you would like to have somebody with you, um, there are um, organizations out there that can provide support. One organization that comes to mind, well, there's two, um, is for you to utilize is um, Fireside Project. So Fireside Project, I believe it's a .org. Um, that's an organization that provides um, virtual trip sitting. So, um, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. So Fireside Project, you can call them. Um, you can talk to somebody who is trained. Um, if you're experiencing something, you may not think that you want a trip sitter or you want somebody present for your experience because you are worried about what's going to happen. You know, what's going to surface in this. You Maybe you don't want to share that. Maybe you want it to be a very inward journey, um, but you encounter something that is significant and you want to talk to somebody, people please reach out to the people um, at Fireside Project. All of those folks are trained. Uh, they can talk you through some things. Um, another area for peer support, if you're looking at being a peer supporter, not so much a trip sitter, this is not a business to you, but you're, you know, you re feel really passionate about coming into the space. There's another organization called Silo Health. It's um, P-S-I-L-O health. I'll put it in the chat. Um, that organization offers a peer support certificate program. It also will educate you on how to show up appropriately um, in this space if you are not a licensed professional. So they do a really thorough job. It's pretty inexpensive to go through their peer supporter program. Um, I've done it and they do a very, very thorough job at explaining what a peer supporter is, what a peer supporter is not, what to do in various contexts. They do talk about um, some of the more chemically things associated with psychedelics, dosing and things like that. Um, they talk about things to look look at, um, you know, if you are trips, you know, you are supporting somebody, excuse me, during their journey. So um, if you're looking at doing that, and it's really good just to take the class for yourself, right? Um, I think knowledge is power. So um, yeah, that would be kind of my, my answer to that. And I did see the other question, are insurance companies covering this treatment? Or is there a possibility of it happening in the future? So um, yes and no. So the only legal treatments right now are off-label ketamine, um, and there aren't any major medical insurance companies um, covering it. There is a, a private um, insurance company called Anthea uh, that is providing um, services um, to you know direct to employers for this. Um, is there a possibility of it happening in the future? You bet. As it gets implemented into the healthcare system, into mainstream medical, as some of these substances become FDA approved and rescheduled and access is opened up and providers are trained, um, do I think in the next five to 10 years, you're going to see some of these substances um, available in your healthcare system? Absolutely. Um, will there be, you know, uh, conversations then around insurance reimbursement? Yes, I think we're a little bit further away from that right now. Um, but like I said, once things get put into mainstream medical system, they get approved, um, they, they get coded by the AMA, things like that. When those things happen, it's pretty much inevitable that there's going to be a conversation about uh, insurance. So Thank you for adding those documentaries, Kara. That's awesome. Those are some really great things uh, that are available uh, for you to watch. Um, MDMA for veterans, possibly one of the next ones approved for insurance. You are very correct. So a lot of the regulatory uh, frameworks that are coming out um, in various states are around um, clinical trials for PTSD for veterans. Um, obviously we understand that's a very uh, underserved population. So uh, there is a lot of research that's going in around uh, major depressive order, disorder, um, like I said, PTSD, treatment resistant depression, um, specifically in that population. So yes, there is a lot of conversation. There's a lot of veteran organizations talking about that uh, right now too. 
um, as opportunities. And I know there are some opportunities uh, for veterans to start to engage with psychedelics in, in various capacities. So a great organization that does a good job for veterans um, in talking about these conversations is an organization called Balanced Veterans Network, BVN. Um, if you're not aligned with them, I highly suggest you check them out. They're a nonprofit organization. They support education uh, for um, alternative medicine, specifically for the veteran population. So they're a great organization to be um, aligned with. Any other questions or, or comments? This has been really good. Um, thank you guys for asking these questions. These are really, really great questions. Yeah, I would say we put some resources there for you guys to check out if you really need this information and you want to share it. Um, I just want to echo what you said, you know, Mia, about the connection and community and making so many connections through this. Um, one of the things that really is beautiful about our community here firefly hollow all you little fireflies out there you know one of our things that we love about the connection that we have at the center is you know we have events that all of you are you know we're on the same page we want to better the world we want to better ourselves in mind body and spirit and it's really beautiful and sometimes this that does fall under the umbrella of consciousness and personal development and i will say if you've been having a hard time finding like-minded people even if they're completely different worldviews, what's so beautiful, like I said earlier, about the psychedelic community and people who are involved in it, exploring or just curious in general, there's this open mind and there's this acceptance. There's this, I want to connect. I want to know who you are, like authentically. And that's where I think a lot of us have a hunger for deep connection in community. And we need that for healing you know, the, the amygdala, the, the nervous system, our limbic brains, we have had such disconnected. And I know that that's something that it's a huge piece for how we even operate, just how our nervous systems operate to have that connection can help us to feel safer, feel validated and just have ha more happiness in our life. And so I encourage you guys to either tap into our organization to the psychedelic club we'll talk about that and then maybe mia you can tell, tell people who are not local how to find a club that maybe is already existing um because of that need we, you know we love the uh, people are so excited to show up like every time we have our meetings every month and the events that are coming and the things that are happening and i'm just so grateful for that because when you're in a group of people where you know that what that group is about is doing something together and you're doing something in a with a mission and a purpose that's going to change the world that you know you're being a part of that it's not even like it's to, it's just cool getting together with pe people that like to play certain games and you're hanging out with your friends that like specific music you know your same consciousness but this is i think so powerful because of how much we know it is already and will continue to change the world in a huge way and so i encourage you to you know learn more and if you feel called like come out and connect with some of these like-minded people or this this expansion of consciousness value that we value that the expansion of consciousness and uh, what it can do to help the world you know join us so yeah so i know mia is sharing some resources there for mm -hmm. that i'll be to chat about that yeah, so the Global Psychedelic Society or the Global Psychedelic Organization is um, basically just an, an initiative that supports all of the smaller chapters worldwide. So they do have a really great online database of um, psychedelic um, you know, organizations that support community programming, whether they're clubs, whether they're societies, um, groups, uh, academic groups. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities to engage. You know, the Psychedelic Club itself is a national organization. There's about 30 different chapters. Um, there's some that are really prominent, like, you know, the Psychedelic Club of Denver and, and West Coast chapters that have been around for a long, long time that have, that have thousands of members um, that have been doing work for a really long time. So, um, you know, we, we try to learn from them and learn from the um, opportunities that they've provided to their communities and uh, what's worked and what hasn't worked. Um, a great place to look for 
you know, organizations or meetups are, are on the meetup platform. Um, you can look on Facebook, um, you can search, uh, you know, other social media networks, um, but like meetup is a really great opportunity. You can also look at Eventbrite events. A lot of um, smaller organizations post their events on Eventbrite. So uh, you can find uh, various events and like I said, uh, organizations there, but the Global Psycho Psychedelic Society um, is a great resource um, if you're looking at um, looking for organizations in different areas. So the Psychedelic Club itself um, is, um, you know, meets monthly in York, is a great opportunity to connect with people. Uh, we'll be offering some, a lot of really great opportunities in 2024 to do some advocacy work, to do some fundraising, to do some education uh, for the community, um, to do some fun events. So um, please feel free to get involved. Um, it is, and we have just an open community discussion and um, the more voices that are there, the better. Um, and then there will be opportunities for very um, specific types of events, whether they're healing circles or integration circles or um, planning discussions, things like that. So um, lots of opportunity, but um, you know, connecting with people, connecting with people like Firefly Hollow that host these amazing events is definitely a step in the right direction. So. Thank you so much, Mia. Yes, thank you for thank having you. me. Yeah, thank you guys for being here. And I encourage you to you know, share this with anyone that might be interested. Definitely check out all those resources and stay tuned. Awesome. We, again, we will be, I will be announcing some of the upcoming events for the Psychedelic Club, for the nonprofit in the newsletter for Firefly Hollow and obviously mm -hmm. in the private community here too. So when there's activities and events, but just remember it's the first Thursday of the month for if you want to come locally, if you are local to the Firefly Hollow at 6.30. So mm -hmm. it's 6.30 to 8.30, 6.30 to 8.00, 6.30 to 8.00. It is. 8 yeah. it, yeah-ish. We usually just keep talking, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great time. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, again. And I'm going to stop the recording.